zoax.net. Lesson 7. Input. For this lesson, you will need a project like the one we created in Lesson 1. We've talked about how to print characters in the output pane. In this lesson, we will talk about going in the opposite direction. Namely, we will show how to request and get data back from the user. Our first program introduces the read function, which we will use to read a single character of input from the keyboard. I want to first note that you need to add this code after main, which reads throws java.io.io exception. We will explain more about this code in a few lessons, but for now we will just note that it needs to be added when we call the read function. If you forget it, you will see this message when you try to compile and execute your program. Inside, we begin by printing a message that requests input. In the next line, we call the read function to receive the input. The character that the user inputs is returned and then stored in the int variable that we call iUnicode. In the last two lines, we output a message with the Unicode value of the character that we received. Executing the program, we see this message in the output pane prompting us for input. At this point, the program is waiting for input, so we type in an uppercase X and press enter, and the program outputs the Unicode value 88 for the character. Note that the program requires you to press enter before it accepts the input. Also, you need to make sure that the pane has focus before you enter your character. Focus is indicated by the cursor and you can set it by left-clicking inside the pane. Unicode is a standard that associates each character with a unique integer value. Different characters have different Unicode values, which you can see by rerunning the program. You can consult our Unicode reference table to find these values. One other thing that we should mention is that there is nothing restricting someone from entering multiple characters at a time, like this. However, if someone does enter multiple characters, only the first character will be used and the rest will be ignored. Being able to get input allows us to create quiz questions as we demonstrate here in our second program. This program begins with the statement that Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492 and then tells the user to answer T or F for true or false. In the next line, we take in the input and store it in our char variable C answer. Note that we use the word char enclosed in parentheses in front of the function. We will not get into the details of this yet, but we will just remark that it is necessary because we are storing the value in a char instead of an int. In the next two lines, we output the user's answer and then the correct answer so that the user can see whether or not he was correct. Notice that we also added our throw statement as we did before. Executing the program, we see our question. If we enter T, we will see that we answered correctly. On the other hand, if we enter F, we see that we are incorrect. Notice that our output is a character instead of an integer value because we stored the value in a char variable rather than an int as we did in the first program. Note that there is nothing preventing a user from entering something other than T or F in this case, but we will see how to deal with these situations later on.